Hello, I'm Jerry Ritchie, uh, the lead service technician for Budzar Industries. We are a manufacturer of process heating and cooling equipment located in Willoughby, Ohio. We've been manufacturing chillers of this nature for over 40 years at three locations, um, two located on the east suburbs of Cleveland and one in uh, outside of Shanghai, China. In this particular instance, this is a propane system and we are located in northern Colorado in the process of commissioning and startup. So bear with us, it's hot today and there's a lot of noise going on with the construction site. The first lower container is chiller one. The second container is chiller two. And then on top of that is a two tower systems, one tower per chiller. They supply the condenser water, the cooling for the condenser and the refrigerant circuit. These systems are very unique, especially in the United States is becoming more popular, but the refrigerant is R290, which is a purified propane. It's not the same that you have in your home barbecue grill. It's purified, has excellent thermodynamic performance. It is a non-toxic with zero ODP, ozone depletion potential, and a very low GWP, global warming um, potential. It is flammable, however, so the chillers were manufactured inside a container they have a ventilation system for safety purposes and heat control, trying to keep the temperature below or around 90 degrees Fahrenheit, um, but it's all explosion proof, class one div two rating, purge panel systems, everything related to that. And that's why everything's contained in the containers and we have the evacuation system. Due to the flammability of the refrigerant um, and the electrical involved in the class one div two area, we have an elaborate um, exhaust or ventilation system. We have two motors. Uh, one is on a VFD and the other is on off in the event that um, the cabinet temperature increases too high or worst case scenario, our refrigerant uh, leak detection system uh, gets to a 100 LEL level and then both fans run or blowers run at 100% or 60 Hertz full speed to exhaust those flammable fumes um, and also keep the temperature in the enclosure down. Okay, we are inside uh, container one, the lower container, which is chiller one. Um, we're gonna go through a brief rundown of the individual components um, as efficiently and quickly as we can, um, but also be thorough. This is compressor one. It is a semi-hermetic screw compressor with a step control for loading and unloading. This is compressor two, same compressor. They're complete with capacity control, oil flow switch, and service valves. They're very serviceable, easy to work on, even though they are installed in this confined space. Um, down here in the middle of the, the skid is the evaporator. That's where the cooling is done. In this case, the customer circulates Paratherm L-Arm, that's the fluid media for their production. I mean, it comes through the evaporator, comes in here, out on the other end. Um, this vessel right here is the condenser. The water provided um, to this condenser is the tower systems up on top. Tower one is for chiller one, the lower chiller. Tower two is for the upper container, chiller two. As we look, it was, we pan down a little bit, we have each system also has an economizer. The economizer gives us a little more capacity and provides a little cooler cooling for the compressor when we're running at a warm temperature or higher pressures. Um, it's also the first stage of capacity control as we come down to temperature set points. Again, there's all kinds of service valves everywhere where for serviceability and isolation. As we come down this way, these are our discharge lines. They go to the top of the oil separator, which is this tall vessel in the back and that's where the oil is separated from the hot, high pressure discharge gas. Um, the oil then goes through the oil train. We have an oil cooler. That's what this smaller vessel, it looks like the condenser, just smaller, but um, this is actually the oil cooler providing the lubrication to the compressor through these lines here. We have a little flow indicator and we have a flow switch on each compressor. Um, that's a safety to protect the compressor. We never want to run the system dry. Um, we always want to have lubrication. We monitor flow through the evaporator um, from a differential pressure transmitter located here 
So we're looking at inlet pressure, outlet pressure, and registering the difference to as a flow acknowledgement or verification. Because these we're in Colorado, um, the cabinet also is equipped with electric heaters. Um, you can see one down here at the base and there's a second one here, which is not so easy to see, but there's two of them in the container. So as our exhaust vents ramp up and turn on and off as they're needed to, those dampers lift automatically. The oil separator has um, heat trace on it to always keep the oil at roughly 130, 104 degrees Fahrenheit in the cold months. In this area, it could very easily be below freezing and um, the cabinet needs to be um, kept warm, the oil needs to be kept warm in the event the compressor cycle off. Throughout the refrigerant circuit, you could find these three-way um, manifolds for the pressure safety valves. Um, the unique or advantage of this system is you could isolate one of these PSVs at all times while the other is protecting the system. So one is always open to the system while one is closed. And the advantage of that is you can replace a rupture disc or a pressure safety valve or calibrate the transmitter while still operating and running the system. This is a mechanical water regulating valve. This is the device that meters the water being delivered to the condenser to maintain compressor discharge pressure. This water again is supplied by the tower systems on the top of um, the towers here. Okay, this is our um, HMI or um, human interface module. Um, this is for the status screen for the lower container, the container that we're standing in. You have your compressor. We, have, we are monitoring suction pressure, discharge pressure, suction temperature, discharge temperature um, of both compressors. Um, again, the evaporator is where the cooling is done here. We are monitoring flow by differential pressure and we have inlet and outlet temperatures. Um, in this case, we're gonna operate at a minus 25 degree Fahrenheit set point, but the chiller is capable of minus 35 um, Fahrenheit. Um, basically through here, we have our main expansion valves. We have our economizers that are also controlled by electronic expansion valves. Um, we have our little oil cooler and our condenser oil separator. And you can see other indicators, flow switches, level switches. Um, some of these things are not active because we are still in the uh, validation or startup phase of this project. I can go back to the home screen and this is where you locally start stop the system. This is where our leak detection system could be monitored. This is where we change our set point and we are controlling inlet evaporator temperature because of the volume of fluid within the system. There are, I believe, 1500 gallons of uh, paratherm LR. Um, this is, we have our fan status, which tells what the, um, the ventilation safety system is doing along with our tower system and all the set points and parameters involved in that. I can go back and we go to the tank system, which is located in the upper container. We'll get to that shortly, but we have um, two pumps, one for each um, container or chiller and a standby pump, and they can be alternated. The standby could be used for either one. Um, we'll get into that in more detail when we go upstairs. We have some uh, passcode or um, our safety settings and cycling setup are all passcode protected so that you can't, not just anybody can change settings and damage the equipment or ruin a production run. So these are password protected. Okay, we are up at uh, level two, container two, also chiller two. This container or this refrigerant system is identical to the lower container with the exception of the tower water system. Let's go inside and take a look. Okay, we are again in uh, container two and I wanted to point out the difference between the lower um, container and the upper container. And the only difference is, is the tower water system. We have a uh, stainless steel tank and we have three pumps. Um, the first pump, 301, is, delivers water to the lower container condenser. The middle pump is a standby, which can be used or alternated for 301 or 303. 303 delivers the tower water to chiller two, container two condenser. 
Um, but this standby pump can be alternated and used for either one by making the selection at the HMI, the human interface, and by manipulating these butterfly valves. It really only takes a minute or so to make this switch and the standby pump could take place of either other pump, leaving the production running, um, even though there may be a fault or a leak or an issue like that. Okay, I wanted to take a moment to explain the uh, refrigeration safety um, device. It's a Draeger um, 5000. What this does is it picks up any propane. It's, it's programmed for propane. And once it gets to 100 LEL, that's the point where the safety systems kick in. The ventilation system, the alarm beacons, the buzzers, audio and visual alarms um, to evacuate the propane that's in this container. It also notifies everybody to stay out. And then once the level goes back down to zero, the system goes back to the standard state where the one pump is running at 30 hertz and the other one is off and we're back to a safe situation. You do have to acknowledge the alarms before you can start the system back up again. Okay, um, we're taking another view from the other side. Again, we have container one, chiller one, container two, chiller two, tower system one, which supplies the cooling water for chiller one, and tower two, which supplies the cooling water for chiller two. Right now we're in the phase of commissioning or starting up the equipment. And that's why all this gear is in the way. Um, we're in the process of getting this thing fired up and running for our valued customer. I'd like to take a moment to explain what Buzzar has to offer as far as service and after sales support. We have a full team of service technicians like myself that travel all over the world. We have full support. You could call Budzar 24 seven to get a phone support or Zoom conference calls, anything like that. We try to make ourselves versatile and available to support all of our customers' needs anywhere in the world at just about any time.